Now, let's look on the material balance for the single stage liquid liquid extraction. Okay, before we can look for the overall mass balance or mass balance on component A or mass balance on component C, it's better for us to look through the schematic diagram of the single liquid liquid extraction. Okay, so we're going to draw a block diagram here. Okay, or the schematic diagram of the of the single LLE. We're going to represent our feed stream, and we're going to label it as the as L naught. Okay, we're going to label our solvent stream as V two, and then raffinate stream as L one, and extract stream as V one. Okay. So these are the streams that these are the four streams that we have. We have two inlets, okay, and then two outlets, right? So this type of liquid liquid extraction use uh, counter current flow, okay. So we have to decide uh, the symbol for the components that we are dealing with, okay. So in our case, we're going to uh, choose the symbol of A, component for solute. We're going to choose C as a symbol for the component for the solvent. And we cannot see here, but we have uh, three components, which is B, okay, to represent the diluent, okay, or the carrier in this case. So having uh, decided the symbol for three components, which is A, B, and C, or solute, carrier, and the solvent, okay, now we can label the mass fraction for all the streams involved. Okay, so these are the <coughs> mass fraction of uh, solute, carrier, and solvent in the feed stream and this one is the mass fraction of solute carrier and solvent in the raffinate stream and we also have the mass fraction for the uh, solvent stream and mass fraction for the extract stream okay so look at the subscript here the one here represent for this one and then we have subscript 2 represent V2, uh, YA2. So we have 2 here. And then 1 here represent 1 here. Okay. And then not for the feed stream, you have uh, not, uh, symbol not. Okay. Or subscript not here. Okay. So the total uh, value for the uh, mass fraction is equal to 1. So if you add XA0 plus XB0 plus XC0, the answer should be equal to 1. Okay, you cannot get more than 1. Okay, same thing for the total mass fraction that you have here. You should get always equal to 1. Okay, same thing here. When you add everything here, you get equal to 1. When you add everything here, you always get equal to 1. Okay, and then the symbol of L1, V2, V1, L0 here. So these uh, represent the mass flow rates of each stream. Now, after labeling your schematic diagram, okay, with the symbol that you're going to use, where A represent the solute, B represent the carrier, and C represent the solvent, all right? And then you have the label for the uh, feed stream, raffinate stream. Uh, solvent stream and extract stream now it's easy for you to come up with the a balance equation so you can have overall mass balance okay you can also have mass balance on component A or your solute and then you're going to have mass balance on component C so if you were to use this uh, material balance equations so you can solve many unknowns involved Okay, so because you cannot just solve uh, the unknowns, 
based on the graph. Sometimes you need to do the material balance for component A, component C or overall mass balance to get the answer for the given questions. Okay. Okay, after you have labeled your schematic diagram, okay, and you can come up with the uh, equations of uh, material balance for uh, for the schematic diagram that you are referring to, okay, and then uh, you can also refer to the ternary phase diagram also, and it should be labeled based on what you have in your schematic diagram, okay, so in your schematic diagram, the mass flow rate is given by V1, V2, L0 and L1. So in your ternary diagram or ternary phase diagram also, you're going to have L0, L1, V1 and V2. Okay, so it should be the same symbol that you have used before. Okay. Alright, so by looking at the ternary phase diagram, okay, now let's look at the uh, bigger picture of ternary phase diagram okay so this is the ternary phase diagram for single stage uh, liquid liquid extraction okay so I just want to describe a little bit regarding to the ternary phase diagram all right so in this uh, diagram okay you're going to label uh, you're going to label your location for your feed you're going to label the location for your uh, solvent you're going to label the location for the extract and then you're going to label the location for your uh, raffinate. Okay, so let's uh, read what we have in front here. Okay, so first of all, you're going to have two axes. Okay, two axes. The x axis represents the mass fraction of your solute. Okay, next, uh, the y axis represents. Uh, the mass fraction of your solvent okay so by looking at this all right by looking at this okay you're going to see that uh, the location of your L naught is here okay which is not on the equilibrium curve so this is your equilibrium curve okay let me uh, revise a little bit okay so in this equilibrium curve, you're going to have two layers. Okay. So this layer is called extract layer. Okay, extract layer. And then uh, at this part, you're going to have raffinate layer. Okay. So these uh, two layers are separated by a point. Okay. Uh, something with uh, one point which is between the extract layer and the raffinate layer which is called plate point okay so that plate point will separate the two layer and then you call this part of the layer as raffinate layer and the extract layer okay on this extract layer okay if you were to deal with a multi-stage uh, liquid liquid extraction Okay, you're going to draw the uh, tie line okay, between the extract layer and the raffinate layer. Now, because you only have a single stage here, therefore, you only have one tie line developed here. So, the tie line is the dotted line that you draw. Okay, you draw when you, want, when you have to connect between your raffinate location and the uh, extract location okay so you're going to connect uh, the two points where the points here represent your uh, extract and then here is your raffinate okay and then when you look at it okay your extract okay and your raffinate lies on this equilibrium curve okay so L1 lies at the raffinate layer V1 lies at the extract layer so both okay both lies on the equilibrium curve so therefore the components uh, the composition that you have for your B1 and L1 are in equilibrium okay but when you look at L0 okay when you look at L0 L0 does not lies on the equilibrium curve so based on this we can say that okay the composition of L0 
is the composition where only a single liquid exists okay only a single liquid exists but when you look at the location of m okay so m the composition of m lies inside the curve okay so this is the uh, location where you're going to have two liquid phase coexist okay coexist so how do you label this okay how do you label the information that you have from the schematic diagram in the ternary phase diagram so the concept that you're going to use to label the coordinates for l naught is the same as when you are to have any points where you want to label it as x and y coordinates okay so in this case l naught okay l naught is also given by x y exists okay but the x exists represent the uh, mass fraction of the solute and then the y exists uh, the y coordinate represent the mass fraction of the solvent so these components are parts of the mass fraction that you have in the feed so in this case you can see that uh, you have a value of x a naught okay which is less than one but the value for x c naught is equal to zero okay is equal to zero so you can say that your feed consists of only the solute and the carrier which is component a and component b only because your c is equal to zero now let's look at the uh, solvent stream which is your b2 okay solvent stream and this is the location of your solvent stream okay and as you can see it is on the top of the y axis okay on the top of the y axis so when you talk about you want to know the uh, the mass fraction of the solvent stream okay so you just read the coordinates that the value of x here is 0 and the value of y here is 1 okay so when you label your solvent coordinates it should be labeled as ya2 and yc2 so it is uh, very obvious that uh, the value for yc2 is 1 therefore ya2 is 0 and then at the same time yb2 is also equal to 0 because when you add the mass fraction the total value that you get for ya2 plus yb2 plus yc2 should always equal to 1 So you can uh, also label your V1 and L1 as what we have learned before. Okay. So remember that the maximum that you can go for your x axis is equal to 1 at this position. So this is 1.0 and at this location you have equal to 1. Okay. So same thing here if you want to label your M. So you want to label your M your m is equal to x a m and then uh, x c m okay